Hey everybody, hope and pray that you're doing well. Today as we come to our word from the word. And today that word is confer. Confer. Now, it was always kind of funny to me that, you know, if you get a, a diploma, if you earn a degree, they confer that degree. Or defer, I mean, I'm sorry, confer that uh, diploma to you. And, you know, you can, some of it could look at it as like it's a gift, like they're giving it to you. Uh, but let's be honest, you know, if, if you've been on the receiving end of that, then, you know, well, they're not just giving this to me. I worked hard <laughs> to earn this and to receive this diploma or certificate or whatever the case may be. Now, today and this week, as we're going through uh, Psalm 21 through Psalm 25 this week, just a psalm every day. And as always, I encourage you to read the entire psalm, even though I'm just going to be pulling out portions of it to look at and apply to our lives today. I, I want us to see something. All these are Psalms of David this week as well. And, and to see what David is saying, uh, being king, he understands an amazing thing. You know, a lot of kings and, and, and David was not without fault. And, and I hope you understand that even as we look at different portions, at, at times he was doing everything right. And, and, and he can be excited and, and I don't like to use the word proud, but he could he could be at least excited for the fact that what God was doing in his life, um, at least he was being obedient. But he also understands that he didn't get there on his own. And it's one of those things where you would think that a lot of times kings and those in power and, and David, even at times, right? He uh, got a little ahead of himself and he thought he could do whatever he wanted because he was king. But I guess he would do well to go back and read his own writing and and we would do the same if we go back and look at what God has already shown us in his word. But I love here in Psalm 21 today, just looking at verses five through seven. And he's he's talking about and giving praise to the Lord for even allowing him to be king. And uh, he's even talking about really just the joy that he has in salvation. Salvation comes from the Lord and his rescue comes from the Lord. So his joy is in the Lord. And so some of it he knows applies to the way that God even put him in place as king. So verses five through seven, he says, his glory is great in your salvation. Honor and majesty you have placed upon him. For you have made him most blessed forever. You have made him exceedingly glad with your presence. For the king trusts in the Lord. And through the mercy of the most high, he shall not be moved. See, isn't that something to think about that he says, look, I realize that all the things are coming from you. And we'd be, we would be doing well to have leaders, not just in our nation, but leaders all across the globe that realize that God is the one that's really in control. That any power that we think we have, and I mean, this, this goes the same for even in, in bosses and any kind of management or any any kind of activity where you have people under you, if you'll look at it that way, that as you're thinking about that, you can say, well, I earned this. I, I did this all on my own. But see, when we understand that gift, right, was conferred to us. And it wasn't like maybe that diploma that we think we really earned, right? This is all based on the mercy of God, the grace of God. Have you ever just stopped to think of all the things that God has given us? I mean, even just to think about the joy that comes from the salvation in Jesus Christ. There's nothing we did to earn that. That, that we, were, we were enemies with God. And yet God chose to reconcile us to him through his son, Jesus. That was not something that was earned. Certainly not something that was deserved. But it's about the grace and the mercy of God. And we would do well to look at our lives and stop saying, look at what I've done. Look at what I've accomplished. And I think sometimes maybe even just the, the words that we use sometimes. Even just to say, well, God has blessed us with this. God has uh, placed me here. God has done this. If we're always starting sentences like that, 
we're giving God the glory from the beginning. Even in the valley that we're saying God has allowed us to go through this or, or God is allowing us to be tested because he sees something, either sees something amiss or sees something that he wants to fine tune, sees some, sees some area of our lives that he wants to strengthen. Regardless, whatever God wants to confer upon us, whatever God wants to freely give by his love and his grace and his mercy and his sovereignty for his perfect plan. I pray that we would not be reaching as as we're grasping for him to uh, like little little kids just grasping for Santa Claus, right? For those gifts. But I pray that we would have hands outstretched open to receive whatever it is that he desires to give us. So what will your hands look like today? Will you be willing to receive whatever he has to offer, good or bad? Because his plan is perfect. Whatever he may confer upon us today, let us receive it with joy. God bless you. And I pray you have a great, great day.